Welcome. I welcome you to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. In this lecture, we shall study the Vidhi Sutras or the operation rules, which is the core part of the system of Paninian Grammar. So, the first question is what is a Vidhi? Generally, it is understood as prescription. What it means is a direction to follow some procedure in order to achieve an intended or set end result or fruit. What it also means is that a statement, vidhi is a statement that provides you with knowledge about something which is not obtainable through any other valid means of cognition. That statement is called vidhi. These are the general ideas about vidhi. <clears throat> the main vidhi as far as the process of speech communication is concerned and the vyakarana is concerned is the kriya. So kriya bodhaka shabdaha vidhi, this seems to be the first sutra. The statement which directs a speaker to select a word indicating an action is this vidhi and also the statement which directs a hearer to identify a word indicating an action in the audible speech is also main vidhi as far as the process of communication is concerned and the vyakarana grammar is concerned. This rule is not stated in the ashtadhyayi but this is definitely part of the arthakasha and the shaptakasha. The main vidhi which is stated in the Ashtadhyayi is the Pratyaya vidhi which is defined in the following manner. Pratyaya Jnapakam Vachanam vidhi. This sutra is also not part of the Ashtadhyayi. This is part of the current tradition of Paninian grammar. The text called Shabda Sutra. Pratyaya Jnapakam Vachanam vidhi which can be explained further as Pratyaksha Anumanadi Pramana Adnyaya Pratyaya Dnyapakam Vachanam Vidhihi which means that the statement which lets know the Pratyaya which is not known by any valid means of cognition namely perception or inference and the statement tells us about the Pratyaya that statement becomes the Vidhi. All the sutras stated in the three chapters 3 to 5 are precisely these vidhis. Chapter 3 has sutras prescribing the pratyayas to be added to the verbal root that is dhatu and chapter 4 and 5 have sutras prescribing the pratyayas to be added to the nominal root known as pratipadika. <coughs> this is the main vidhi stated in the ashtadhyayi. What do these vidhis do? The main vidhi. The main vidhi informs the reader about a possible suffix to be added if the intention of the speaker is to express a particular meaning and to keep doing it recurringly until the string of words intended to convey the meaning thought about is generated in the form of a sentence. And also, words thus derived are considered as grammatical and sentences thus derived from these words are also considered as grammatical. That is the main function of the Vidhi Sutras. So <clears throat> here are some important examples of the Pratyaya Vidhi. The first one is Tadbhavita Pratyaya Vidhi. So there is a suffix L which is an abstract pratyaya and the sutra lakh karmani chabhave cha karma ke bhyaha states the meaning 3469. What it states is that when an agent or an object or just the state is to be denoted at the pratyaya 
suffix l after a verbal root. Of course, if the verbal root is transitive, then this l <coughs> is to be added to denote the karta or karma. If the verbal root is intransitive, then the l is to be added to denote the karta as well as state only and not the karma. Now, l is an abstract pratyaya or a suffix in whose place actual verbal elements are stated as substitutes and therefore this is called tadbhavita pratyaya. <coughs> now, if we look at another sutra bhava karmano 1314 which states that when object or the state is to be denoted only the atmanivada substitutes in place of l are to be added after a verbal root. So, these are the tadbhavita pratyaya vidhis. <coughs> l is a tadbhavita pratyaya and therefore the vidhi which prescribes this l is called tadbhavita pratyaya vidhi. Then we have vibhakti pratyaya vidhi. We have already seen this in detail when we studied the karaka notion and the vibhakti. <coughs> so, the first one is anabhihite 231, karmani dvitiya 232, kartaru karanayos tritiya 2318, chaturthi sampradane 2312, apadane panchami 2328 and saptam yadhikarane 2335. These are the sutras which prescribe the vibhakti pratyaya to be added in order to express particular karakas. Therefore, these sutras, they are known as vibhakti pratyaya vidhi. So, these are the main vidhis. Remaining are the other vidhis, which are also known as vidhi shesha. They are of the following kind. The first one is prakriti sadhaka pratyaya vidhi. So, the pratyaya vidhi which generates a prakriti, these are the following ones. Prescription of those suffixes which are added to a type of root and which generate another root of the same type or of another type. This is what is a prakriti sadhaka pratyaya vidhi. So, there are three scenarios here. From the verbal root, you add a suffix and you generate either a dhatu or a pratipadika. From the pratipadika, you generate pratipadika by adding a pratyaya. So, such a statement is called pratipadika sadhaka pratyaya vidhi. And from the verbal root that is dhatu, when dhatu is derived, then that statement is called dhatu sadhaka pratyaya vidhi and pratipadika sadhaka pratyaya vidhi. From the padas, by adding certain suffixes, dhatu is generated pratipadika is also generated. So, those pratyayas and the statements stating those pratyayas are considered as prakriti sadhaka pratyaya vidhis. Let us look at the examples. Let us look at first how dhatu is generated from the verbal root dhatu. So, we have a section 315 to 31 consists of a list of pratyayas which take the verbal root as an input and prescribe a suffix to be added in a particular additional meaning and the output generated is a verbal root as per 3132 sadat dhatavaha we have already studied this so for example we have 317 which adds the suffix s to a verbal root dnya here so we have the meaning to know and we add the meaning desire to it. So, now the meaning is the desire to know. To express this we have the verbal root dnya dhatu to which we add the suffix s according in accordance with 317 and so we apply the other rules which apply over here and we derive the form jidnyasa now. Now, this jidnyasa is considered as a dhatu by 3132. So, from dnya Jidnyasa is derived. Jidnyasa is a dhatu, dnya is a dhatu, sa is the suffix which derives this dhatu. Therefore, the statement 317 is called prakriti sadhaka pratyaya vidhi. And this prakriti is dhatu, so dhatu sadhaka pratyaya vidhi, that is what it is called. 
So then we get Jidnyasa termed as Dhatu by 3132 and then we get the forms Jidnyasa Te as well as Jidnyasa and Chakre and so on and so forth. Similarly, the other example is we take the meaning to know and then we add the meaning inspire. So now we get the meaning to inspire to know. So we have Jnya as the verbal root denoting the meaning to know and we add a suffix e which means inspiration to inspire by application of some other rules now we get the verb form dhnyapi dhnyapi and this is once again termed as dhatu by 3132 so this dhnyapi now is the form that is derived which is a verbal root this is an output derived from the verbal root dhnya by adding the suffix e by 3122. So now we add this e here and so we get Dnyapi and then we get Dnyapayati, Dnyapayan Chakara etc. These are the forms. These are the verbal forms that are derived from the verbal root Dnyapi and this is an example once again of a statement 3122 is an example of a statement which generates a, pra a prakriti dhatu from another dhatu. Then we have a pratipadika generated from a verbal root dhatu by adding the suffix. In the section from 3191 up to 3476, all the sutras take the verbal root as an input and add a suffix and return the output in the form of a Pratipadika. These suffixes are termed krit. We have already studied this term. So we have patha as the verbal root <coughs> to which is added the suffix ta which is a krit and the output is pathita which is now a pratipadika. So from the verbal root patha the sutras which prescribe this suffix ta which is 32102 we derive the Pratipadika Pathita. So 32102 is the Prakriti Sadhaka Pratyaja Vidhi. The Prakriti that is generates is Pratipadika. So it is a Pratipadika Sadhaka Pratyaya Vidhi. Similarly we have Patha plus Tavya. So the Sutra Tavya Tavya Niyaraha prescribes this Tavya after Patha and the form that we generate is Pathi Tavya. So the Sutra Tavya Tavya Niyaraha is the prakriti sadhaka pratyaja vidhi. Similarly, we add the suffix tva samana kartruka yog purva kale after the verbal root patha. So, this statement which prescribes the suffix tva is the prakriti sadhaka pratyaja vidhi and we get the form patitva. Similarly, we get the suffix tum added after the verbal root patha and the sutra which prescribes this tum is the prakriti sadhaka pratyaya vidhi where patitam is the prakriti that is generated. Patita means what was read, patitavya means what should be read, patitva means after having read and patitam means in order to read. So patita, patitavya, patitva and patitam are the prakritis, the pratipadika prakritis which are generated from the verbal root patha by adding the suffixes krit suffixes ta, tavya, tva and tum. So the sutras which prescribe ta, tavya, tva and tum all of them they are called prakriti sadhaka pratyaya vidhis. Then we also generate a pratipadika from another pratipadika. In the section 4176 up to 54160 there are sutras which take a pratipadika as an input and add a suffix to it and return another pratipadika as an output. We should also say that it is not just a pratipadika but the pratipadika which takes a particular sup to which these suffixes are added. These suffixes are termed as taddhita suffixes. So the statements which add these taddhita suffixes they are called prakriti sadhaka pratyaya vidhis. So, for example, if we have to express the meaning descendant of garga, we add the suffix ya 
stated by Gargadi Bhyoyai, the sutra, after the Pratipadika Garga. And we derive the verbal form Gargya. Now, Garga is a Pratipadika and Gargya is the derived form which is also a Pratipadika by 1 to 46, Krita Dhita Samasascha. Now, this Gargya as a Pratipadika is derived from another Pratipadika Garga by adding the suffix ya. So, the sutra Gargadibhya Yai is the sutra which is called Prakriti Sadhaka Pratyaja Vidhi because it generates another Prakriti. Similarly, if we have to mention a student of Vyakarana as a meaning, then we have the verbal form Vyakarana which is a Pratipadika to which we add the suffix a an actually by the sutra Tadadhite Tadveda. Now, we derive the form Vyakarana. So, Vyakarana is a Pratipadika derived from Vyakarana which is another Pratipadika by adding the suffix an by the sutra Tadadhite Tadveda. So, Tadadhite Tadveda is the Prakriti Sadhaka Pratyaja Vidhi of this kind. Then we have another type of Pratyaya Vidhi where from the Padas Dhatu is derived. So there are some sutras in the section 315 to 31 which take the finished form namely a Pada as an input and add a suffix to it and return a verbal root Dhatu as an output. For example, Sun and to desire for self if these two meanings are put together then we get the meaning to desire son for self. And so we have putram plus ya. Putram indicating son and ya indicating to desire for self, oneself. Now putram is a pada to which is added ya and so we get putriya as an output. Putriya is the verbal root stated by 3.132 sanadyanta dhatavaha. Ya is the suffix stated in 318 and so this statement super atmanak kyach 318 is a prakriti sadhaka pratyaya vidhi. So this is the prakriti that it generates namely a dhatu and this is a pada from which it generates this that is very much peculiar. And so we have putriya as the verbal root so putriya takes the functions of a verbal root and it generates forms like putri yati, putri yan chakara, etc. Similarly, we have another type of prakriti sadhaka pratyaja vidhi, namely from padas, pratipadikas are generated. The sutras in the section 211 to 2238 take padas as input and generate an output in the form of a compound which is also a Pratipadik. So we have Radnya Purusha Gachati as a sentence in which Radnya and Purusha, these two are connected words from which is generated Raja Purusha as a compound or a Samasa and this Raja Purusha is now a Pratipadik. So this is the output Raja Purusha and this is the input which is Pada. So from these two Padas, Raja Purusha as a Pratipadika is generated. And this Raja Purusha is Pratipadika, so it gets the form Raja Purusha, etc. So, this is a Prakriti Sadhaka Vidhi, whereby these two Subantas, Pratyayas are stated. Saha Supa is that Vidhi. And the specific Sutra Shashthi 2.2.8 prescribes this specific process of compounding. Then we have Prakriti Adesha Vidhi is another type of Vidhi which is a prescription where part of the root or Prakriti or the whole root Prakriti is substituted by a verbal element in the environment of a particular other verbal element and we have seen this example. So we have Asa plus the in the environment of the suffix the Aster Bhuhu 2452 prescribes the substitution of bhu in place of asa. So we get asa plus the substituted by bhu plus the and so we get bhu the. 
So here the entire asa prakriti is substituted by bhu. So aster bhu is a sutra which is prakriti adesha vidhi. Similarly, idam plus h and idam gets substituted by e. We already studied this in the previous lecture when we looked at the Paribhasha Sutras and the place of substitution. Now this E replaces this idam and we get the form ih. So this sutra idama ish is called the Prakriti Adeshavidhi. Then we have Pratyaya Adeshavidhi. This is a prescription of the substitution in place of a pratyaya which comes immediately after a root or any other root. So for example, if you have Rama plus this, this is 3 slash 3, Rama is a pratipadika, a nominal root. In this case, Atobhisa Ais, Sutra 719, substitutes Ais in place of this. When this comes immediately after an anga which ends in short a. So now we have Rama plus ice, where ice is the substitute in place of bhis. So this entire pratyaya bhis is substituted by ice. So we get the form Ramais and the final derived form is Ramaihi or Ramaiha. Now in this case, Atto Bhisa ice is a sutra which prescribes the substitution in place of a pratyaya. So this is called pratyaya Adesha Vidhi. This is an example of the Pratyaya Adesha Vidhi. Then we have Agama Vidhi, a statement which prescribes an augment to another whole verbal element. For example, 61137, which is Samparibhyam Karotau Bhushane. Now, what this means is in the sense of decoration, the augment Sut, which is Sir, is added to the verbal root crew when it is preceded by the preverbs sam and pari. So we have sam plus kru plus t for example as the stage of derivation and here is the meaning decoration. So we add s to this kru and because it is stith it has to be added before kru by adhyanta takitav 1146. So now we have sam plus s kru and t and so we derive the word form samskrit. So 61137 can be called an Agama Vidhi. Then we have Varana Adesha Vidhi. This is a Vidhi which is a prescription of a substitution of one sound or many sounds by another sound in the environment of other sound or sounds. For example, Ikoyanaji 6177. What this means is that immediately before an Ach, Ik is to be substituted by yan when they are uttered in close proximity, samhita. So we have dadhi plus atra in which this e comes immediately before a that is ach and so eko yanachi applies and this e is replaced by ya when a follows and so we get the form dadhyatra. Now this 6177 is a varana adesha as it prescribes the substitution ya in place of e in the environment of a immediately followed. So 6177 Iko Yanachi is described as Varana Adesha Vidhi. Next we have Chalaswara Adesha Vidhi. This is a prescription of the dynamic accent generated from the constituent accents. We have seen this part when we studied the compositionality aspect in the system of Paninian grammar where we said that the compositionality as far as the system of Paninian grammar exists at three levels. The meaning that is artha, the word that is shabda and the accent namely the swara. Now here we have a sutra Anudatta Syacha Yatro Datta Lopa 61161 which means that that anudatta vowel is substituted by an udatta vowel when the same anudatta causes the deletion of the previous udatta. So that is why this is the chalaspara, the dynamic accent. So for example, we have 
Deva plus E, Deva is finally accented. What is accented is not marked by any symbol. De is anudatta, Va is udatta, followed by this E which is anudatta. So we have Deva plus E. Now, this word Deva is also formed from the verbal root Deva by adding the suffix ach by the sutra nandigrahi pachadi bhyaludin nechaha. So because the pratyaya is this ach marker, marked with ch and then chitaha, the rule comes into play and marks this entire word as antodat, followed by this suffix e which is ni stated in the meta language of panini per as a marker and therefore this is anodatta by the sutra anodatta usupitau. Now because of this e, this final a gets deleted by yes teacher 64148. This a is a udatta vowel. So because of this anodatta vowel now, this udatta gets deleted and so we get the form dev plus e. Now what happens is by this 61161, this anodatta gets transformed into udatta because this anodatta causes the deletion of this udatta. So this udatta gets shifted to this. So we have dev, de as anodatta and this e now udatta without any marking of an accent. So now we have the form Devi with final Udatta, E Udatta, which is caused by this Sutra 61161 and therefore this is called Chalaswara Adeshavidhi, the dynamic accent prescribing Sutra. To summarize, we studied the notion of Vidhi together with the dichotomy of main and subordinate aspects of it. This is also correlated to the concept of vidhi in the Purva Mimamsa school of thought, which says vidhi ratyantam aprapti. Aprapti means pramanantarena aprapti. These vidhis make the core of the system of the Paninian grammar. The technical terms as well as the meta rules, the saudhnyas and the paribhashas, obtain their purposefulness only after becoming one with the statement of the vidhi. Vidhi vakya eka vakya tapanna is only when they become meaningful or purposeful. We shall study some more types of vidhis and then the niyama in the next lecture. Thank you for your attention.